All right. Thank you so much for being on, everybody. Um, I'm Mandy Heller Adler, and I'm on with my uh, associate partner, Nancy Rona Sol. I can't even say your last name. Zolotara. <laughs> Um, I say Dolo Torofe, which I know is wrong, um, but I have to learn. Uh, but I'm here and we're, we're here, I call her Nancy, obviously, uh, and so excited to be here today to talk to you about um, how Girl Scouts can enhance your college application, and, um, and thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Thank you the slides. Yep. I'll go like this. How's that? Okay. I'll remember. <laughs> okay, so just briefly, uh, I want to tell you a little about International College Counselors, who we are, why we're here, why we might know what we're talking about. Um, basically, uh, I started International College Counselors 16 years ago. Um, I, my story is I, I grew up in South Florida, and um, I went to a really great public school called Miami Beach Senior High School. I went from there to the Wharton School, the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I actually went to Harvard Business School. I worked at Goldman Sachs. I started an internet company. I sold an internet company. Um, and then I, I got married um, and I moved back to South Florida. And I started thinking about um, my life and what I wanted to do with my next uh, stage of my career. And I realized that everything I had done and everything I had accomplished and all the wonderful um, opportunities I had had up to that point were clearly tied to my education. So um, I felt like I had learned so much at uh, my, my high school and, and most importantly, my college and graduate school. And I just had these amazing experiences that um, I really wanted to bring to other students. And, and because of that, I started International College Counselors. Uh, I started before there were uh, so many college counselors. I actually used to spend most of my time explaining to people what I did because college counseling wasn't really a thing. Um, but since starting it actually here in my home office, uh, I, we now have, uh, I think, uh, 11 offices, um, nine in South Florida, three outside of Florida. So Nancy comes to us from our Charlotte office in North Carolina. Um, and we have 14 counselors, all of whom specialize in, in college counseling, as well as some of them do have particular expertise like art or music or athletics, so we're really able to match children with the appropriate counselor to help them reach their academic goals. Um, what, what our mission is, is to do everything that's tangentially related to college. So that might include high school planning, extracurricular activities, which is where the Girl Scouts comes in, uh, narrowing your college lists, essays, applications, interviews. So anything that, that relates to college we're in. Um, I actually will say I have a student, I'm working with her on ideas for her gold award. So uh, it's really anything that might positively impact um, a student and, and their, their goals. And here I put in red, um, and this is a shout out to my niece, Penelope, who turns out she's not on this call, but she should be on this call. Uh, she is a Girl Scout. Uh, my niece spends every free moment doing Girl Scout stuff. And if she doesn't, it, it sure seems like she does. And I love her and, and I see how much that Girl Scouts has done for her. And so we are actually providing one free hour of consultation for all Girl Scout families, anyone who's on this call. Um, someone had asked me in the Q&A about um, getting a copy of this presentation. So in that, in that email, I didn't disclose it before, but in that email, you will not only get a free copy of the, you'll get a copy of this webinar, but also one hour free consultation. So if you have general questions, please, 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 please put them in the Q&A. Um, and we will get to them when we can. But if you have specific questions, like you say, my child has this particular need or this particular question, or that, you know, please um, use that free hour. Even if it's not such a particular question, you just wanna use your hour, um, that would be great. So just know after this, you're gonna copy the presentation and you're gonna get one free hour consultation with either Nancy or me or someone from our staff. Um, and that's just for Girl Scout families. So we actually charge $250 normally for a free hour, for an hour, which isn't free. Um, and this is special for, for, I would say, Penelope and her friends. So um, thank you so much for being on. And that's my switch to the next one in case you think I'm crazy. All right, so how do Girl Scouts apply to college? Um, so number one, they plan and they don't panic. I feel like one of the biggest things with college admissions and the biggest change from uh, when I was applying to college and I, the parents on this call, I think can agree, 
uh, we just applied. It wasn't that big of a deal. I don't think my parents read my, actually, I know my parents did not read my essay because looking back now, it was horrible. Um, but, you know, now there's a lot of panic. So, so what I say to families is you don't need to panic. You can plan. Um, and, and that makes things a lot, a lot better. Um, number two, the Girl Scouts, they learn the rules of the game. And that's the point of today, right? Today, we're going to kind of take you through the rules of the game. Um, and by knowing the rules of the game, you can play the game. Um, should college be a game? No. Is it a game? Yeah. So we own that. We learn the rules of the game and, and we go for it. Um, they also have fun, right? So a lot of times, and the thing that makes me so upset is when parents say things like, well, Girl Scouts isn't good for college, okay? That's crazy on a couple landers, number levels. Number one, if your child is having fun and it's healthy and it's good, then that helps for college. And it also helps them become better people, which certainly helps college. So having fun um, is an important part of the process, not just because I think students should be happy in high school, um, but also because I do think that translates to better um, human beings um, and allows them to be number four, which is more authentic. So if you're, if you're driving towards uh, having fun and doing things that, that make you happy and that better your child and that better you, that allows you to be authentic. Um, and I speak for Nancy and I speak for everyone on our staff. The secret to getting into college really is being authentic. And what I mean by that, it's maximizing the child's individual gifts or strengths, um, which makes them the best version of themselves they can be, right? I always say to families, you don't need to be all things to all people. You just need to be the best version of yourself that you can be. And by being that, you will, uh, you will have the most college options available. All right, so just jumping right into the game, right? Uh, once again, if you have particular questions, please add it to the Q&A. We will get to them uh, more towards the end but uh, feel free to, to put them in there. Um, but it, so starting from the, from the beginning of the road, um, the most important thing for college, and, and this is a question I always ask teenagers, and I feel like if, if they know this, um, they are halfway there, is the grades and the rigor, right? The, the child's transcripts. So at the end of the day, will your child's gold award get them into Harvard? No, right? Uh, will, will your child's straight A's and, and good test scores plus the gold award get your child in Harvard? Possibly, right? But, but we work with students who do amazing things, um, and that's great, and we always encourage them to do that. But if their grades and the strength of their schedule does not follow that, that does not translate into a top college, right? So, so families sometimes forget that colleges are academic institutions. So at the end of the day, the most important thing behind everything is your grades and the strength of schedule. And what I mean by strength of schedule is that a child has all A's in like the, the lowest classes, you know, that doesn't fool a college, right? So you might have 4.0 in like PE, but um, you know, college is looking for the strength of schedule as well as, um, as, well as uh, the grades. All right, so in addition to the grades, we have standardized tests. Um, I will make it very clear right now, and Nancy knows me, so she knows it's true. I hate standardized tests. I think they're like a big fat waste of time. Um, however, do I think they're important for college? Absolutely. Uh, once again, that goes back to knowing how to play the game and it goes back to planning and not panicking, right? So the best way to handle standardized tests is to plan out the testing. Um, I will speak to subject tests first. Um, a lot of competitive colleges require them. A lot of students don't necessarily think about subject tests until they're in 11th or 12th grade when it might be too late. So if you have a child in ninth grade um, and they're looking at competitive colleges, excuse me, uh, please do consider subject tests because your child might be taking a class that would have a subject test at the end. Um, if you don't know what a subject text is, please reach out to me and I will ha gladly answer that question in our free one hour. Um, but subject tests are required or recommended at some competitive colleges. And then as far as the SAT and the ACT, either one works. Um, and students usually take it two to three times in their junior year. Um, there are a lot of expensive tutors. Uh, we can certainly recommend a few if you'd like, but there are also a lot of free test prep. Khan Academy is awesome, as is ACT.org. All right, so I cannot talk about um, standardized tests right now without talking about the changes due to COVID. 
Um, a lot has changed because of COVID, but nothing has changed as much. A lot has changed, obviously, but a lot has changed for college admissions, but nothing has been impacted as, as greatly as um, standardized tests. So what a lot of those of you who have high school juniors uh, or rising seniors know is that a lot of colleges are now test optional for the class of 2021. Um, this changes every day. Um, I think today, uh, Nancy, we just saw Johns Hopkins went test optional, BU mm -hmm. went test optional, and this is just like within the last couple hours, right? Anyone else today? I think BU has been, um, Johns Hopkins, and there, there were a couple other ones, yeah. Okay, so the so um, point is, is they keep coming out. So, so students are always like, oh, is this one test optional? I say, give us a week, maybe. <laughs> I think most of the schools are going to be going test optional. Um, already, you know, the Ivies, Penn is test optional, Columbia, Cornell has sort of a variation of it, but, but I think that's the direction schools are, are moving in. Um, just speaking quickly about this, um, they're test optional, but they're not test ignored. So there's a big difference between saying, I will not look at tests and I will consider tests. So if, if your student is able to take the test and do well, we still recommend that. Um, and as of right now, the June ACT is still taking place, the July ACT is still taking place, the, the August SAT is taking place. So your students should be able to take the SAT or ACT. Um, but if they can't, because of some reason uh, likely related to COVID, um, then do not worry. You can still uh, submit applications and get consideration for, for some really competitive colleges. Great. Okay. <laughs> so what comes next? Where so does Girl Scouts next? come in? Exactly. So, you know, obviously Mandy has just talked about sort of the main dishes, right? Like grades, um, rigor, uh, standardized testing. Those are the main, um, the main uh, factors that schools are looking at. Um, extracurricular, there are other pieces to the puzzle, including extracurricular activities, um, which is where Girl Scouts come in. And there are a number of ways to, to showcase Girl Scouts. Um, so as we all know, um, there are a million extracurriculars to choose from. Um, colleges do want a diverse, well-rounded class. So they do want, they want students who play sports. They want um, students who are in uh, government, school government, um, ones who are on the school newspaper. Um, and Girl Scouts is right in there with it. Um, I do have to say, though, I would imagine, I you know, I've never done an actual study on it, but I imagine there are fewer Girl Scouts coming across the desks of admissions reps than there would be soccer players. Nothing wrong with being a soccer player, although you are, you know, standing out as a Girl Scout. Um, so that's something to take it, you know, to keep in mind. Um, to It is completely worth it following this all the way through um, to uh, through your high school career. Um, also extracurricular, something to keep in mind is they're really Colleges aren't really looking before ninth grade. Um, so again, it's just emphasizes why continuing, uh, continuing with Girl Scouts is a great idea. Um, and also during this time, we are getting a lot of students who are, well, it's COVID and not really doing anything <laughs> this summer, but um, there are tons of virtual opportunities out there. And that is something that we've been working on with our students on a lot. So, so um, keep, you know, keep all your activities up, including Girl Scouts. Okay, so why is Girl Scouts so great for college admissions? Um, so extracurriculars certainly reveal important traits about you. Um, Girl Scouts alone, just saying Girl Scout, you know, saying you're a Girl Scout, it immediately connotes um, certain, you know, highly desirable traits. So that can include leadership, commitment, passion, organization, time management, all things colleges, you know, love, crave, want on campus. Um, so, um, so that alone, you are going to be, you, there are places in your application to highlight it, but again, just immediately, you know, it, it sort of rings a bell um, for, for admissions reps. Um, in addition, um, there are certain opportunities, right? So the gold award um, is uh, something you can highlight on your application, something that is very prestigious. We will get into that in a, in a minute. And then the National Young Women of a Distinction, which is an even, you know, greater um, a greater award, more prestigious. Um, there are opportunities like include uh, attending the national convention, um, you know, which is networking, um, gaining some leadership skills, listening to some inspiring uh, speakers, and then um, earning your Global Action Award, um, which really can showcase you as a global citizen, um, somebody who really cares about the world. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity for you. 
So getting, I think someone had asked about the Silver Award earlier. Um, so the highest Girl Scout Award for cadets uh, is the Silver Award. And so going backwards for a minute, as I mentioned, you know, colleges aren't really looking before uh, that ninth grade mark. But um, the Girl Scouts who start their Silver Award project can continue this project uh, for their Gold Award. So you're really, um, you know, building a great foundation. Um, so again, cadets, uh, sixth to eighth graders, are uh, the, the Silver Award is accessible to them. Um, it really shows confidence, helps them gain confidence um, that again can, can build a foundation for the following year. Um, and you can gain the skills which will help you compete, uh, complete, uh, complete the Gold Award. Anyway, so it's just, it's really a, a, an amazing springboard to the Gold Award. And it's not to diminish the value of the Silver Award, it's just from a college admissions perspective, you know, the Gold Award sort of just is, is going to be what sort of counts. So uh, the Gold Award. Um, so this, you know, as many of you already know, it's, it's the highest, one of the highest awards for, uh, for seniors and ambassadors. Um, so it's a seven step process. I actually just worked with um, a student in the last cycle, uh, the last education cycle, who was a Gold Award winner. Um, she uh, created a 5K for her community um, for, um, for a disease that, you know, she felt very tied to. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was a great experience um, for her. It, it really it helps her leverage, um, you know, many aspects of, of um, in the college admissions process. It, it helped. Well, again, okay, so, so it's a seven-step process. You're identifying the issue, investigating it, you know, you're creating the plan. It just really reveals an immense amount of skill and talent and commitment. So again, it just really um, helps the admissions committee, um, you know, see you as a very accomplished um, applicant. Um, so I know they did see her that way. Um, so again, then moving on to an even more prestigious level is the National Young Women of Distinction Award. Um, so this is just, again, as many of you know, it honors the truly, as if it wasn't outstanding enough, this is now um, honoring even more uh, outstanding projects. So it's just top 10, you know, the 10, uh, 10 scouts receive uh, this incredible recognition. Um, on top of that, they're also given this um, sort of ambassador role where they get to represent Girl Scouts at events. Um, so on so many levels, this is really um, such, a, you know, a boon for these, um, for these 10, uh, these 10 Scouts. I mean, it's not to diminish, again, the Gold Award winners, but um, this is a, an extreme, um, an extremely well-received um, accomplishment on a, a college application. And again, um, for those of you, of you who haven't seen an application, there is an honor section um, and this would fit, fit very well in there. And it's a national honor, which is again, something that's something that's nationally recognized, holds even more weight than something that's locally recognized. So on top of, you know, sort of the, the application bragging rights, um, there could also be uh, potential monetary uh, benefits. Um, so besides um, the council, uh, different, there aren't, all the councils are not listed here uh, that offer scholarships, but this is just a handful um, of some of the, uh, some of the councils that are offering scholarships to scouts. Um, so, I mean, a council award can be as much as $2,000. Um, and then, you know, sort of in a connected way, uh, you can also, um, it can also make you eligible for more competitive scholarships from private foundations um, and other awards like the Gloria Barron Prize for Young Heroes, the Prudential Spirit of Community Awards. So if you're a you know, gold award winner, corporations are more likely to grant you um, a scholarship. So, so the, those are two separate ways that you can earn scholarships. And then um, also colleges, um, there are, many colleges um, who obviously um, think very highly of Girl Scouts, they want them on their campus. So by they're trying to attract them by offering them scholarships. That says a lot about what colleges think um, about Girl Scouts. So um, the awards can be as high as $18,500. That's Westminster College. I'm sure everyone's gonna be logging onto that. <laughs> later, um, but it's renewable for up to four years. Um, and there, there is a full list of um, colleges that offer scholarships on, girls, on the Girl Scout site, girlscouts.org. 
but I would definitely take a look at it. Um, there's. I just want to stick in, if, you know, if any of this here sounds interesting, um, you know, as I said, we have the one hour free consultation. So please, 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 please follow up with us. Um, you know, we can provide the, the, the more of the scholarship information or more of the, you know, award information, whatever you need, just more on a personal basis. We're just giving this more blanket for, as you can see, we actually now have 144 people on this call, which is amazing. <laughs> Um, but you're all different ages and all over the country. So um, I'm so thankful that, that Nancy's providing all this good information, but there are more schools and more scholarships. And so this was a, this was sort of a feeder and then we will follow up with you after. But um, as you can see, colleges love Girl Scouts. Indeed, they do, yes. So um, the personal essay, um, which again, there's a, a main essay, you know, when you apply as well as um, numerous supplemental essays. Um, so the prompts are really asking about interests, you know, time you faced a challenge, when you question a belief, problem you solved. There are so many um, experiences that, you know, scouts have in these categories that you can write about. You know, there are many um, students who are sort of paralyzed with not knowing what to write about. And, um, you know, there's just like a buffet of, of, um, of topics that often come to scouts just because they've had so many experiences and they've you know done community service and they've seen it all so um, it just really provides a, an excellent opportunity it's also you know the essay is one of those one of the rare places where you can actually um, where, where the colleges can, can get to know who you are what's important to you what you value um, so can I read this essay yes sure okay so I had sent Nancy uh, right before this call uh, one of my students who goes to an Ivy League school now, uh, she goes to Penn, um, and she was a Girl Scout, and here's her Girl Scout essay, and I remembered it because I liked it so much. Um, but I think what's cool about it, it, it showcases her commitment to Girl Scouts. You will see she did not cure cancer, and she got into an Ivy League school. A lot of people are like, oh my God, my child needs to raise $800,000. Um, no, your child needs to be authentic. Your child needs to be a good student. Your child needs to show leadership, um, and here's the, here's the essay. Um, for eight years, I have celebrated polyester. Donning my vest of brown, green, or khaki, I have relished the unpretentious simplicity and power of the Girl Scouts. Without a doubt, the Girl Scouts has been instrumental in guiding me through life and instilling the values of education and community building. As a senior, I was invited to attend a career fair campout. I quickly noticed a new scout who was alone. Although the problem was surely not of great world magnitude, I realized that I wanted to help the little girl. I decided to create a program to collect puzzle pieces that placed together would read the Girl Scout Promise. The activity demanded interaction among all the scouts, which ultimately resulted in group cooperation and camaraderie. Looking back, I realized that I am, a lot, I am much like the Girl Scout uniform, understated, unafraid, and a little old fashioned. It reminds me the importance of doing the right thing and making a difference one action at a time. So I asked you, don't you like that girl? You definitely <laughs> like that girl. Um, I love her. And she was a Girl Scout, so. I still love that opening line. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so we help with those essays too. <laughs> we do, definitely. So I'm gonna hand it over to Mandy now. All right, so in addition to the essay and the extracurricular activities, which uh, is where the Girl Scout falls in, um, other factors of admissions include recommendation letters um, and interviews. So, you know, giving another nod to the Girl Scouts. Um, in addition, actually, we left it off here. You can also have an, an additional letter recommendation from someone outside of school. So it could be, you know, the program where you did um, your, your gold award. So I, I'm working, actually, I worked with a student this year who's now going to Northwestern, yay, Alana. Um, and her gold, her gold award was um, she would play uh, music in, in elderly homes. So she got a letter of recommendation from um, some of the elderly home, one of the elderly homes talking about how, you know, meaningful her contribution was. So that was a great letter of recommendation. Um, it could be from a, a Girl Scout troop leader. It could be just someone who knows you well and can say something different about you. Um, interviews, right? So, so Girl Scouts are, I, I know for my niece who's giving presentation to the veterans and you're doing this since she was five, uh, well not five, since fifth grade, I said five. Uh, so, so she's really good at public speaking and she's really strong, she's strong personality. Um, and, and so interviews are, can, can be an important factor for admissions. Um, and, and so those two things uh, add to, you know, making a stronger uh, application. 
right. With all that said, I couldn't talk about college admissions without talking about choosing the right college. Um, are there colleges that don't value Girl Scouts? I guess so. Um, I probably would want to go to one of those schools, right? Because that means that your values don't match up with the values of the school. So it doesn't mean that, you know, the school needs to have a Girl Scout scholarship, but, but I would say a, a school that, that values Girl Scouts, right, is a, is a school that values service. It's a school that values, you know, community, a school that values commitment. Um, and so when you do your search, if those are things that are important to you, then, then you want to match that with the college. Um, now, how do you learn about colleges now in the time of COVID? Uh, we altered this for, for today. Um, so there are these virtual information sessions now. Um, they're not as good, I will say, but they're not terrible and they're free. So that's a, a benefit. Um, and then you can also visit colleges, explore websites, and then connect to social media. But um, there are over 3,000 colleges in the US. So there is a, a seat for every tush. Um, and, and so, you know, if students really do consider the broad range of colleges that exist and really do find the right one for their grades and their test scores and their needs and their goals, then um, getting into college actually isn't as bad as it sounds. Okay. All right, <laughs> turn over to Nancy for the younger children. So, so basically, I'm sure you're wondering, okay, I'm not ready to apply yet. What can I be doing now? <laughs> there are, there, there's a plenty that you can be doing now um, to just, you know, as you wind up um, toward, uh, you know, toward the time of application. Um, so one of, one of the items um, that, that's great for Girl Scouts is earning the college knowledge badge. Um, so while this badge I know can only be earned by girls in 11th and 12th grade, um, we do recommend that Scouts start working on this as underclassmen. Um, you know, it, it really tackles applying to college one step at a time. It'll give you the chance to, you know, explore college options, um, become familiar with the admissions process, financial planning, improving those study habits that'll help you with the transcript, um, and building healthy habits that will just um, really help you, you know, once you are residing on a campus. So um, this is the college, I, I don't, I think it's only the last couple of years that this was added um, yeah, yeah. to the roster of badges. So, um, so we're excited about this one because I think this, this will be great. This is great. <laughs> so what else can you do? Um, so keep track of all those activities. Again, um, we know that, uh, you know, colleges are looking even the summer before. So this summer, if you're going into ninth grade in the fall, start keeping track of your activities, how many hours are you doing them. Um, this will all just make it a lot easier once it comes time to apply. Looking over, it's, sometimes it's hard to remember. Reading and building your vocabulary, um, which is great in the social distancing time. You know, it really helps with testing and essays. Um, discussing sort of social media, there's a lot um, that you know, schools can sometimes, will sometimes check social media accounts uh, and you don't want uh, any consequences of that. You just, you, you wanna keep it, uh, keep it all clean and, uh, and uh, in, in a positive light. <laughs> uh, plan productive summers. Uh, we actually have a, we have a big role in helping our students figure out uh, how to maximize their summers. We want them to have fun, you know, we want them to relax, but on the same time, at the same time, there are so many ways that they could be exploring their their interests and um, and strengthening and strengthening their resumes, quite honestly. So there's a lot of ways. Uh, getting to know colleges, as, as Mandy had just discussed, uh, familiarizing yourself with financial side, searching for private scholarships. You could be doing, you know, anyone in high school can be doing that. Some of them are appropriate for ninth grade, 10th grade. Um, you know, there are some of these, um, some, these websites, uh, fastweb.com, scholarships.com, that will, will help you find, uh, find some private scholarships that you can apply to. Um, it'll be like a little contest for yourself. <laughs> All right. So we're not, don't go away yet just yet. Um, we, we actually send it right on time where we want it to be at 731. Uh, we wanted to use this time to ask, to ask, to answer particular questions. Um, just as a quick recap, right, uh, getting into college involves, uh, we say there are, there are four main pieces. Number one, uh, there's the grades and the score grades, and that's the most important thing. Number two is the um, SAT, ACT in normal years. This year, maybe not as important. The third thing is that extracurricular activity, right? So that's where the Girl Scouts come in. We feel very strongly that the Girl Scouts is a coveted activity. Um, 
I will say it's not like a sport in that, you know, they do recruit for certain sports. So yes, if your child is an amazing lacrosse player, um, that can make up for everything else, right? Because they're getting recruited or if your child is an amazing musician, they can get recruited for that. Um, but if your child is, so when we compare it to non-recruited activities, shall we say, so comparing that to let's say um, model Congress or, or um, business or uh, science uh, activities, you know, Girl Scouts holds, holds weight, right? Um, and, and that's where the extracurricular activities. And the last piece really is, is finding the right school, right? So um, it's making the match between you and the school and then bringing it together with the applications and the essays. Um, and that's really the, you know, the last two pieces is where our company comes in as far as um, making the match between you and the college, uh, as far as your own personal preferences, as well as the applications and the essays and then also helping to refine the extracurricular activities, which may or may not include Girl Scouts. Um, but obviously we're here because we, we believe in Girl Scouts. Um, we think it's a great activity and, and feel that it can be very beneficial for colleges and that people don't have to worry that, that colleges don't recognize it because they, they certainly do. Um, so in turn, it opens some questions. Uh, once again, if you have particular uh, questions. We do have a one hour consultation. I answered one of the questions online. It was someone asked like it was like a very particular relating to their child and their silver award. I just think that's better to do offline because I would need the question just for those of you who didn't see it was, you know, how to my child is, is has their silver award, but wasn't sure um, if they're gonna get their gold award. How do I um, maximize my silver award for the application? Well, it's a great question, but it's very specific to that child's silver award. So, um, so that's one of those that's just better, you know, to ask us directly. But of the general ones that I can answer, I'm going to start now. Um, if you have questions, please put them in there. So this one comes from 7.02 p.m. Um, so there was a for early bird, but, but please add your questions. So this one says, I, if I work towards the gold award, what will, what, Blah. Will that be of value after college, i.e. during the job application process? So in other words, is this an activity that you can put on your, on your resume after college? Um, so I worked in investment banking. I would say I think it would be interesting to see. I mean, even now with my company, I, I think that would be interesting to see that someone was a Girl Scout. I think Girl Scouts are always um, coveted and appreciated, uh, especially by women. Um, I, I think it does show uh, a commitment to, to women, women's issues, uh, camaraderie, collaboration. Um, so I would absolutely put it on uh, a job application resume. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe there's a job that wouldn't be appropriate for, but I can't actually think of it right now. So um, I, I think it'd be very appropriate for your, for your college, for your, for the rest of your life. Um, I see one at 702 from Ursula. We, we did sort of answer that one. How do you get your gold uh, award project to, uh, project to show up on your transcript? So it's really not necessarily, so it's not on your transcript. It's more on other sections of your, your um, application. So in activities, it could turn up in your personal, in your personal essay, and it could also be uh, talking points during interviews. Yeah, so. I think Ursula just got a little confused as to what shows up in your transcript. So your transcript is just your grades. Uh, your gold award would not show up. Um, your cho it shows up just on the rest of your application, and and just like uh, that girl Melissa did about her college, her uh, girl, her Girl Scout essay, it can show up in your essay. All right, let's see what's coming up next. All right, if your child is torn between two majors, of thinking of double majoring, is it best to select undecided in application or pick one of the majors? Should they perhaps apply to the major where the child has a higher GPA and more courses, extracurricular evidence? Specifically, my daughter is looking at biochemistry and art animation. Okay, that is such a good question, although it's so loaded. Okay, and here's why. You are likely paying so much money for college. I would think that you would want your child to study what your child wants to study when they get there. So the first question to ask is, if I pick art, for example, and my child wants to study biochemistry, will they lose out on that? you know, area of study. So, so you don't want to play games to get into college if then your child can't actually study what they want to study. Um, you know, this happens a lot with my students. Engineering now is very hot um, and engineering is, is far more competitive to get into. So oftentimes parents will say to me things like, well, should I pick political science? Because that's easier to get into. Um, and I say, that's great if it's a school that allows you to switch from political science to engineering. But if you're in a school where 
you know, if you don't get into engineering at first, then you don't get to study engineering, then you kind of going to college, you're not studying anything you want to study. Uh, yes, you might have gotten into the institution, but you're not able to study. Um, so that's one part of the question. As, as far as the second part of the question, um, is it best to select undecided? I say for college application purposes, no. Um, I always feel it's better to pick a major. Um, and the reason for that is because um, by far, so now that we know that colleges are schools and they value the most grades, right? Academic interest and inquiry. The biggest reason a college would accept you is because of what you're academically interested in, right? So um, if, if I was going to write a why I want to study, why I want to go to your school essay, um, the strongest essays to me always include a potential major, right? So, um, so to be able to say I want to go to Cornell because I want to study uh, hotel management is, is far stronger than I'll go to, to Cornell and I don't know, I want to try stuff, right? Um, everyone on this call who is over 30 knows full well that kids change majors all the time. <laughs> However, uh, just for the purpose of getting in, being able to tie an academic interest with a particular major, I think makes it much stronger. But yes, you should be careful of the major you choose because some are harder than others. Um, however, uh, you don't want to end up at a school where you're not able to study what you want to study because that would be bad. Um, I think, I mean, that would be a waste of a undergraduate education. All right, next question. Uh, the next one, I guess, is one below. Aside from your free counseling session, then I, uh, I take it as important to work with a counselor other than the high school counselor to plan for college. My girls will be freshmen. At what point do we seek advice? They still aren't sure of what they want to do. Do you want me to take that one? <laughs> we could share it. We could share it. Um, so basically, um, it is important to work with, we feel obviously it's of great value to work with someone um, who is very well versed in the college admissions world. It can be very complicated, very confusing. Um, you know, there are all different uh, school counselors. Um, the accessibility and the comprehensiveness of, a, of your ch child's school counselor, so it really depends on how much counseling they're getting. But Basically, um, so when students come to us, it's, it's very one-on-one, -on -one. it's very personalized, uh, it's like the trainer at the gym versus just going to the gym. Um, so uh, it really depends on your needs and what you're getting, um, you know, the amount of help that you're getting as of now. We've, we, um, and at, in terms of when to start, um, it's really, I mean, anytime, I mean, freshman is a great time um, to start uh, because, you know, before you know it, you're choosing classes for the next year. Um, you really want to build up gradually. Uh, you don't want to look back, have regrets, and then, or suddenly be a junior, uh, and then the summer before senior year, try to, you know, um, have an extremely packed summer trying to get in, you know, all these impressive um activities and awards and it's it's basically impossible to do so um so the best thing to do is to work gradually and um and that just seems to to render the most success is there anything you want to add mandy that i might have no i think that's that's great thank you and we as a company we don't charge more when families start ninth or in 12th and the reason for that is because we can do better work you know if we start younger um yeah so that's great I want to talk to the next one because I think that's actually the the crux of our, our meeting today is um, Tanya, thank you so much. How do you know whether a school values Girl Scouts and admissions? So um, why do I know? I know because we talk to admissions officers all the time. Um, that's our job. Uh, and we do and we take it very seriously. So all of us visit colleges regularly, all of us on our team uh, and colleges come to our offices at this point. Um, well, when offices were open. Um, because we're big enough and, and they come, you know, some, in some cases we send more kids to certain colleges than high schools do. So, um, so they come to our offices and we ask them these kind of questions, you know, what do you value? So not just looking at our own students who are Girl Scouts who got in, right? So, so last year I had, I worked with two Girl Scouts, one went to Northwestern and one went to Cornell. Uh, we read you that other essay, the Girl Scout who got into Penn. Um, do they all get into those schools? No, but you know, can they get into those schools? You know, absolutely. Um, and, and what colleges are looking for, so take Girl Scouts aside, um, they're looking for students who, who show commitment to something, to students who show leadership, to students who um, do service, right? So that's a gold award, uh, show leadership, show initiative, um, 
and, and they're looking for students who, who are good, kind people, right? So if we remember that essay again, at the end of the day, like you liked her, right? You, you like that. I mean, you like that girl, right? She's a little old fashioned. She wears her, her polyester and she wears it proudly. Um, if I had to choose between three kids and the one kid's like, you know, I won the math award and the other kid says, you know, I, I won the math award, but I'm also a really nice kid. I mean, you know, that's the one I want. So, um, so do I know if every school and every admissions officer likes the Girl Scouts? You know, of course not. But, but based on our experience and based on our conversations, do we, we feel that in the scheme of extracurriculars, other than the recruited sports, right? I'm not being stupid. So if, if your child is good enough to play football, does that trump Girl Scouts all the time, right? If, you, if you're, I guess your girls aren't playing football, but if, if your child can play basketball, does that trump Girl Scouts? Yeah. Um, but if we're comparing Girl Scouts to the other non-recruited extracurricular activities, you know, I would put it up here. Um, in terms of the expiration date on the one hour session, um, we are offering it for a month. So that would uh, make it uh, July 9th. July 9th is the expiration. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's never too early. So <laughs> it's never too early to check in and, and have a little advice. So. Yes. Okay. So next one comes from Shukla and she says, I am a troop leader and not all the girls in my troop are working towards their gold awards. So how do they utilize their Girl Scout experience in the college application process? Um, so everybody has their own experience with everything they do, right? So um, I imagine, actually I know that the girls learn something just from being in Girl Scouts. So the girls can think about, and, and here's the trick to college essays, is, is we always say it's, it's the why, right? So it's not so much that I did this, it's, it's the why did you do this? And then how did you do this, you know, as evidenced by, so, so if, 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 if one of your, your, your girls and your troop are, wants to say, um, you know, I want to, I want to be an engineer, let's say, um, as evidenced by in the Girl Scouts, when I did, you know, this particular activity, or I work towards this particular badge, or I want to be an educator, and through the Girl Scouts, I did this, right? You know, so it's, it's not necessarily just about winning a tangible award which actually if you want one of the trick to colleges, it's not stupid to work towards these tangible awards. I would say, you know, if you can do it, get the gold award, get the silver award, work towards it. But, um, you know, still just the experience, still having it on your, on your resume. I mean, if we do want to compare it to that recruited or the athlete, right? There are plenty of kids who play soccer who never get recruited. Um, colleges still value that you went out there and you did it and you played. Um, does it count as much as the kid who's good enough who becomes a captain? No, is it bad to have on your application? No, it, you know, it, so it's, it's, it's all relative. It's, it, put it this way, if you don't win the gold award, it's not going to be like, oh great, this girl's a Girl Scout, now I'm gonna get her into Harvard, but um, it would look nice on, you know, a general application. And if your child does wanna to go to Harvard, you know, combined with something else. Yeah. It did give us a lot of fodder last cycle, um, just the other activities that my, my troop did, uh, my, excuse me, my, my scout did. She did so many different activities and was so engaged. We had so much material to work with. Um, okay, so uh, how is a good way to choose the schools you're interested in? What is a good number of schools to apply to? Um, so uh, many of our students, I'll take the second half first. Um, Many of our students are applying to 10 or less, um, and that is because we really work with them on finding the right fit schools, um, a nice balanced list. Um, so that is sort of key. It's sort of honing in on schools that are the right fit, and it doesn't mean, you know, all schools that are right in with, you know, you can go a little reach, you can um, go schools that are a little likely, but in so in a good way to choose, you do want to look at, you know, what your major interest, that's sort of a big driving force. Uh, if you have a certain interest, you definitely want to look on the website and find out do they offer what you potentially want to study. That's a, a very big, probably deal breaker if they don't have that. Um, and then it's going to go down to all the, you know, it's really a personal decision. Do I want to be close to home, far from home? So geography, even weather plays a part. Do I want to be in an urban? It, it, a lot of it comes down to preferences. Um, so there's a lot of questions to ask yourself, um, to ask your, to a lot of discussions. Um, visiting is a great way to get a feel for the colleges. Um, but also you want to sort of hone in on where your, um, you know, your test scores and your GPA, do you fit in with sort of the academic profile? That's another, you know, just a general way to, to start, um, to start the search. And then, you know, we 
we have a lot of conversations with our students about their lists, about the schools. Um, so, so, you know, it's not going to be done in, in a day. You know, it's something that over time you'll build. Um, oh, is there anything else you wanted to add, Mandy, that I missed? No, I think that's great. Yeah, I, I think when students apply to too many schools, it gets overwhelming. So when you read yeah. in the paper about the kid who applied to 37 schools, <laughs> I mean, to me, that's just a waste of money. Um, and I have, to, I, I can't even imagine, each application is like $75. So our thought is you pick the right 10 or whatever and you apply and you get in and you're done. Um, and, and that comes from being thoughtful about it, not just, you know, applying everywhere. Um, I'm gonna move to Donna and also take Sherry because Donna's is really short. Donna, she missed the first 10 minutes of the seminar. Uh, is the entire webinar available for online viewing? And the answer is yes. So since you missed the first 10 minutes, I, I just wanna reiterate that we will be sending you an email that has the entire uh, webinar on it, um, and also with a free 10 minute consultation, 10 minutes, <laughs> a free one hour consultation, um, you know, that's just for the Girl Scouts. This is a special Girl Scout thing. Um, if we don't get to your questions, um, we're going to go till 7.55, which is um, seven minutes from now. So if we don't get to your question, please either email us or save it for your one hour consultation. Um, and uh, we'd be more than happy to answer your question. And, and the slide on the screen obviously has our email address and, and you can you know, reach out to us directly, but you will get that email with, for the one hour consultation. Okay, uh, as far as Sherry's uh, question, my daughter ninth grade is trying out a lot of activities she's interested in. She hasn't found her niche yet. Should she try to pick one or two and activity now or just keep searching for her thing? Um, so this is another loaded question, right? Um, it does help for the more competitive colleges to have um, achievements in something, right? So if your child just does a lot of things, it's really hard to achieve in any one thing. However, there are those people who are just, you know, broad people who like doing lots of different things. So, so I hate to say to children, like, don't try things, don't keep going. And, and maybe being multifaceted is just who you are, right? Maybe you're not a child who just does one thing. You're a child who excels by doing three sports, right? So instead of one sport. Um, and colleges do like that too. So if I go back to the third slide, which was um, Girl Scouts are authentic, um, I, I think you should try to let your child be authentic. Um, at some point, high school is just going to make her focus on things because she's just not gonna have that kind of time. I mean, juniors just don't have a lot of time. Any parent, you know, Nancy's nodding, she had a, she had a junior. Um, you know, with the testing and the scores and the boys and the dating, and, you know, I mean, right at the end of the day, they're not going to be doing as much stuff as they did as freshmen. Um, so they kind of have to force, but, but I would say in ninth grade or even 10th grade, they don't force them, um, but do encourage them to find uh, ways to excel at whatever they're in. So if it's authentic and let's say they do, you know, Girl Scouts and, and soccer and business, you know, try to find ways to go deeper rather than just surface with a lot of stuff. All right. Nancy, do you know that one or do you want me to take it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I know it to, to a point. I don't know a list, but I, I feel like that generally is going to depend on where you are. You have, and to, you have to read it out loud or else they won't know. Oh, right. I'm sorry. How likely is it that you can go out of state, uh, that you can go out of state to a school and get in-state tuition? So obviously we're talking about just public schools here. Um, and it's really going to depend on you know, what states we're talking about. Um, so for example, I'm in North Carolina, um, University of South Carolina, depending on your, your oftentimes it's gonna depend on your, your grades and test scores. So uh, if you're a high achieving uh, student, typically there's a greater chance of getting that um, in-state tuition for schools that offer it. Um, so there are many schools that do not offer that. But so for instance, uh, in North Carolina, the, uh, the, well, actually the University of South Carolina, um, it's not officially, you know, in-state tuition, but, but you can, um, you can achieve in-state tuition there. Um, so there are a number of schools and there are a number of schools that do not, are, are, do you have? Um, no, I think that's the case. So, so some, yeah. some states have sort of like a reciprocity, but um, yeah. for the most part, you know, from the East Coast or whatever to go to California, you're not going to get in-state tuition unless your child takes a year off and you establish residence and you live there. I mean, the states don't want to let, you know, they like your money from out of state. So um, the the ones that have reciprocity usually are like connecting states. Um, but for the most part, you're not going to get in-state tuition. Um, if your child is an amazing, amazing student, they might get in-state tuition because 
um, you know, they get scholarship money that way. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, national merit, actually the merit scholarships, a lot of times attached to big scholarships. Um, but for the most part, it, I guess the answer is it depends. Uh, and if you want to ask us a particular school, use your one hour for that. We can, we can certainly work on that. Um, all right, I'm going to move to Donna. Uh, our seventh grader plays tennis competitively. Does karate on news, oh, does karate on school newspaper is in Girl Scouts and plays an advanced band. She also has great grades. She is interested in Stanford. What are the odds? Um, so here's what I say to my students. Someone's got to get in. Why can't it be you, right? Um, I went to Harvard. I can tell you that not everyone who goes there is a rocket scientist. Um, they accept lots of students for lots of reasons. Um, and somebody's got to get in. So if your seventh grader does all this stuff and your seventh grader keeps up her grades and your seventh grader keeps up her test, you know, gets good test scores, um, I can't promise you that that your child would get in, but you know, there's a, a spot for a child that looks like your 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 daughter. Um, and, and here's what I say to my students. So what's interesting about this job is, um, you know, at a certain point it's a numbers game, right? So it might be that they just don't need a competitive tennis player that year, or that they had, you know, really really good tennis players come in, and and therefore you know Stanford doesn't need need a tennis player that year. Um, a child who can get into Stanford, you know, might not get into Stanford, but maybe they'll get into Harvard or Yale or, or Brown, you know, so, so once a child has reached sort of that Ivy le level, um, and they put forth a good application, at least from our experience, the way I'm able to do this job is that I feel comfortable they will get into one of those schools. Um, so, so, you know, and then do I feel bad if the child's going to Yale instead of Stanford? I'll tell you, no, I don't. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's really about, you know, sort of getting to that academic and extracurricular level and then finding, you know, not only the right spot for you, but also a spot that makes sense for the school. Um, that's where early decision really comes into handy. Um, a little trick, actually, Stanford does not care if you apply early action, unless you're a legacy or you're um, a recruited athlete. So other than Stanford, the other schools, uh, early decision, early action are the way to go. Uh, if you don't understand early decision, early action, please ask us uh, during our one hour. Um, it looks like we have one more time for one more question. You wanna take the next one, Nancy, and then um, we'll- Sure. Uh, okay, so next question is, what is the best thing to wear to interviews for scholarships or college acceptances to both look professional and also stand out from among the others? Um, I'm not sure by college acceptances, but in terms of scholarship interviews, um, you, you do want to look professional. Um, do they have to run out and get, it probably depends like, on what school we're talking about, but you might not have to get a full suit. Um, but, you know, a, a, just a professional uh, look would be, you know, a button down shirt and somewhat conservative. Um, I guess it could vary if, you know, it's the type of school um, you know, you can put in your art school. Wear. In art school, I was going to say in art school. <laughs> Is that what you said in art school? Yes, yeah. yes, that's exactly it. So you know, sometimes you can put your own stamp on it if it's a it's if it's like a very creative environment. Um, but I would say nine times out of ten, you just want to look professional. Um, and you want to be comfortable as well, um, or else you know that could be a problem with the interview. So just make sure it's comfortable yet professional looking. Right. I, this is one of those times that I actually uh, tell parents to get involved because a lot of times kids don't know what professional <laughs> looks like. Um, they're, you know, they're not accustomed to putting on suits. Um, and, and even sometimes uh, like uh, where the place is located might be unique to a child. So just because we work in the South, like a lot of kids don't know up North, you know, that you need to wear a sweater or you need to wear a nice jacket or you can't wear sandals, you know, because it's just too darn cold. <laughs> um, or even, you know, what's acceptable in South Florida, true story. I, I had a girl who was interviewing for the Robertson Scholarship at, at Duke. Um, and for those of you who know, the Robertson Scholarship is a full scholarship at Duke. I mean, it's a pretty prestigious scholarship. Um, and I, I told her she had to wear a suit. So I will tell you, I told her she wore a suit. And then so she actually went to Macy's, she went to Macy's online and she would send me the pictures of the suits and, and we picked one. Anyway, um, but her concept of what was like, South Florida acceptable is not really North Carolina acceptable, you know, so we so it's sort of like, yeah, that's funky South Florida, but it's, it's not really North Carolina. So um, I always err on the side of um, traditional. She did get the scholarship. Uh, so everybody was happy there. But, um, you know, uh, traditional, you, what I say to my students is you don't want them thinking about your clothes. Like if you wear something traditional and boring, then they just won't think about your clothes and they'll, they'll talk 
you. So I, when you asked about standing out from the others, I, I guess I would say don't stand out with your clothes for most interviews. Um, stand out with your, you know, with your intelligence and what you have to say. And unless it's an art interview or a creative school, you know, I don't or think fashion, it's fashion, I guess. Fashion is another one where right. you want to have your own style. On, your, on your list. Um, anyway, with that in mind, it is 7.57. So we're three minutes ahead. I always feel like people like when you end early. Thank you so much for being on. Um, Nancy, you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, please, please, please uh, email us directly. The, the emails are on there or, you know, use your free hour. Um, special thanks to Penelope Heller for making that free hour possible. Um, and, uh, and thank you so much for being on. We, we don't get paid by the Girl Scouts, but obviously we feel passionate about the Girl Scouts. Um, Nancy and I both have daughters. We support girls. We think um, that not enough girls have the, um, the, the confidence and, and, and feel good about the things that girls do. And, um, and, and Girl Scouts is a, is a great way to build confidence and just to make young girls, um, put them on the path for success, which includes college. And we have many, many examples of very successful girls who went through the Girl Scouts and, and then went to highly, highly competitive colleges. Um, does it happen that sometimes kids don't? Of course, but we can tell you that it certainly can open doors that might not have been open before. Um, so thank you again. and. Um, have a wonderful night. Stay well. Thank you. Thank you.